Hi, Ariana. Welcome to the show today. How are you? Hi, Jesse. I'm great. Thanks for having me. Super excited to chat. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited to have you here. I got your package in the mail and like immediate, like I stopped everything I was doing, preheated the oven and immediately, you know, popped, pop one of the bites in and, uh, oh my gosh, my house smelled amazing. Just the, like we're regular listeners will know we're normally a gluten-free house because my husband has celiac and the product, this product's not, is unfortunately not gluten-free, nope. but I uh, do not need to eat gluten-free. So I got a paper plate, made a little, you know, got some foil, used the oven safely and everything and enjoyed my very delightful treat. Oh my gosh. So I'm so excited to learn more about how you make such an incredible product and it well deserved to win a Shelfie Award um, with Startup CPG. Um, and, you know, we've talked about it on a couple episodes of just, you know, Jenna and Patty on the team, like their feedback on the product. So yeah, it's such a delight to get to have you on the show today. Thanks so much. I'm, I'm so excited about the award. I have it right here oh, on my desk. Reminder every day to keep keep on going. So I'm I super love excited. It. That's amazing. Well, can you start off by just telling us a little bit about yourself and how Balkan Bites came to be? Sure. Yeah. So um, the idea for Balkan Bites started now four years ago. Um, my aunt and I, we came up with the idea really out of a way to remember my grandmother's legacy. It was not accidental, but a little bit. Um, so my grandmother passed away four years ago and I really wanted to honor her and, and learn a lot of the recipes that um, she used to make for me. So we're I'm half Croatian, half Albanian, and she was on my Albanian side. So from Kosovo, um, she lived in Kosovo most of her whole life. And then uh, during the war there in the late 90s, she came over and stayed with us and, and lived here until um, the end of her life. So I, I was fortunate in a way that she did get to spend a lot of time here because otherwise I would only see her once a year. So um, it was a terrible circumstance, but I was lucky to have her in my life for kind of the, the second half of it and eat her delicious food. So she would make all types of traditional Albanian food that was really labor intensive, you know, spend the whole day in the kitchen. Um, and it just brought me closer to my roots. And she would kind of teach me about my culture through the food. Um, and a lot of my family came over at that time. So I was just getting exposed to all sorts of amazing dishes um, that you really couldn't find at restaurants or um, in the supermarket for sure. So it, you know, after she passed away, I really wanted to preserve those recipes and hopefully pass them down to my family one day. So my aunt is really the gatekeeper of all of our family recipes. And then also she's a trained pastry chef. So she was a good person to teach me. Um, so we we started off really making burek and it's a, a savory phyllo dough pie. So the dough is stretched super thin. You know, you, typically you stretch it by hand. It's see-through. Um, and then it's filled with different savory fillings like spinach and cheese, beef and onion. Um, you could do potatoes and onion. You could really put anything in there. You can also make them sweet, but the tradition is to eat it uh, a savor as a savory meal. So consumed at every holiday. It's found at every bakery in the Balkans. Um, it's just a really delicious, ubiquitous food. And after we made it a few times, we realized there's really nothing like it in the market. And uh, we think, you know, we had a hunch that people outside of the Balkan community would really enjoy this dish. It's, you know, similar in a way to an empanada or any kind of dough stuffed with different savory fillings that's super flaky and, and delicious. So we tested our theory. We did a bunch of outdoor markets and pop-ups here in New York in 2019 um, so that's really when we launched and it went really well. People from around the world got to try the product. We would make our baked burek at the time. We would make it, freeze it, and then bake it at the events. Um, 
And it was really encouraging. So our plan for 2020 was really to keep testing the market, keep doing what we were doing. And we were kind of starting small, but then the pandemic happened. So we really needed to figure out how to keep going. Um, So we realized we were making these frozen anyway. So maybe try to sell them frozen and get people to buy them and make them at home. So that's what we did. We posted on Instagram. I offered to deliver myself to whoever was in the tri-state area. We had a good customer base from all of these markets. So they were the first to kind of raise their hand and say, hey, we're tired of cooking. Please deliver these to my house. I'm, you know, going crazy. So that that really kept us in business. And then, you know, we figured out how to ship nationwide and we got some real professional packaging made. Um, but up until the end of last year, we were still making everything ourselves, uh, you know, and that our capacity was super limited. Um, but luckily we, we got a co-packer towards the end of last year and it's been such a game changer because we can now sell to grocery stores and just not really worry about providing, um, enough for people and selling out. So now our capacity is almost unlimited and we're, we're super excited to just be more accessible to people because that's really our goal to make our Balkan culture and cuisine more accessible. So, um, we're just super excited for kind of this next chapter. That's amazing. And I didn't realize that you had been able to find a co-packer by now. And like, that's, so cool to commercialize a product that like it feels so home like when I got it I was like I feel like someone like spent you know five hours making this for me like that's the feeling like you get when you like pull it out of the oven it was like how is it that I just heated this up out of the freezer like it feels like I've unlocked some sort of illegal cheat code for baking (laughs) um so that's a, that's so cool that you figured out how to like scale something that has such a like homemade, authentic, incredible feeling to it. Thank you. It was really tough. Um, they, there was a specific machine that our co-packer needed to have, and there were only like maybe 10 facilities around the world that have this machine. Um, and it was a big investment for us to buy ourselves. So we got really lucky to find someone who was willing to, you know, keep, keep our recipe as close to it. We had it when we were making it by hand, um, you know, make sure all of our ingredients stayed the same and, and just be able to make a lot more than we could before. So um, we're, we're feeling very lucky for that. And it's helped us grow this year. That's amazing. And I also noticed that you have had some amazing press like Bon Appetit, Forbes, New York Times, like did those like did did people just like hear your story and like take on to it? Or did you like, you know, did you did you share the story with any of them? I'm just curious how like such incredible press coverage happened and what like well deserved, of course. I loved reading Thank the you. articles and I'll link them in the show notes because I think everyone should check them out. But I'm like, that's so cool to get features like that. Thank you. Well, when we started selling online, you know, I I was like, how am I going to get people to learn about this product and find us? We're not doing markets. We're not at stores where they might just, you know, stumble upon us. So I reached out. I had a friend that worked in PR and she very kindly sent me her contact list. And I spent a whole weekend reaching out to everyone on that list, sharing our story, offering to send samples. Um, Many didn't respond, but some did. And it was, you know, a whole, kind of over a year following up, sending more samples, and we were really lucky and, and got some great press, and that enabled us to now have customers in 49 out of 50 states. So most people, we have a, a survey at the end of our, our checkout flow, and it's like, how did you hear about us? Most of the time, it's, it's from an article. Wow, that's so cool. And then at what point did you find Startup CPG? Um, I think it was maybe late 2020. Um, But then the first half of 2021, I actually spent in Miami. So I met Daniel and I went to a few of the first events down there when everything opened back up. 
Um, and it was so great to just meet the community. And, and since I'm back in the New York area and I've gone to some events here too. So it's just been such an awesome community that's taught me so much throughout this journey. That's amazing. That's so cool. I'm so glad that you're, you're in the group and that you've been able to go to like in-person events. Like that's so cool. I don't, I don't live near a major hub. Um, so other than like expo events, you know, that's my chance to see people in person. So I love that you've been able to go to some of the in-person major city hubs. That's so cool. Yeah. It's been so great. So if people want to want to find you, like what's the the best way? And, you know, you can tell us maybe how it differs for different parts of the country too, but would love to hear how people can, you know, get some Balkan bites in their life. Yeah. So we would love to increase the velocities at all the stores we're at. So that's kind of our primary purpose. Also frozen shipping is just, you know, it's tough these days, but um, we are available in stores in the Northeast, um, some of the mid-Atlantic DC area, um, Chicago, Wisconsin, and Texas. So we're hoping to expand to more regions next year, but everyone else can order us online. Great. That's awesome. And then yeah. what, like what's coming up next for the next, the rest of, you know, the rest of the year, 2023, like what should we keep an eye out for? What are you excited about? Like, what are you thinking about? Yeah, well, we're we're really just trying to be more accessible and grow into more regions. So, um, a lot of hopefully um, some bigger some bigger chains for next year. This year, we're in mostly independents, but um, have had a lot of positive conversations and feedback from some bigger some bigger accounts. So, we're really hoping to be you know almost nationwide by the end of next year. Amazing. Oh, that's so exciting. I Thanks. cannot wait to keep following along. I also, one one kind of uh, final question would just be, are there any like stories that stand out to you in the journey so far of like, you know, big moments or where it, like it felt really real or really exciting? Like would love to hear any sort of little like story snapshot window into, into building the business so far, if you can think of one. Uh, well, I would say so we're we're bootstrapped completely and it's you know it's always a journey especially now that we're we're selling to stores and and just you know trying to get that working capital for the inventory um but it it seems like you know every time we're we're in a pinch we've been really lucky and gotten a grant or a loan has come through so yesterday actually I got an email that um we got a grant from the New York state for a good amount and I did not expect it to come through. And it, it was just like so needed and so exciting. Um, and kind of that reassurance, like everything's gonna, everything's gonna be okay. You got this because when you're expanding to new regions, new distributors, opening new DCs, it's very expensive. So, um, you know, we're, we're just trying to get by on, on what we can and, and stay bootstrapped for a little bit. So every little bit helps and um, just really pursues us to keep going. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's incredible. Well, this has been so delightful to just like get a little snippet window into Balkan Bites and get to meet you and introduce you to our podcast audience. And so I definitely encourage everyone to, you know, Go check out your website that you can go to Balkan Bites. That's B A L K A N Bites dot C O. And yep. then you can also follow Balk Balkan Bites NYC on Instagram. So, like, make sure to give Ariana a follow um, and, you know, and see what's next. And I know that I'm going to be following along. And probably after recording this, I'm going to go turn on the oven and, and heat one up because that sounds. Uh, delicious. And it, it really, I've just never, I don't know that I've really had a product that just I could heat up like that. And it feels like someone made it for you. And like, I think Jenna on the startup CPG team said, like, you know, this is one of those products that you're like, I would order this in a restaurant and pay, like, I would, you know, I would pay for this for like an entree or something. And yet I'm able to heat it up at home. Like how incredible to bring that full experience home. So yeah, can't say 
enough good things about your product and just so excited to keep following you. So thanks so much for joining uh, me today and spending a little time with me. Thanks, Jesse. It's been great chatting.